Well, I want to put out this video about the uh, stupid, idiotic <laughs> anti-Trump rioters and stuff. Actually, there's a lot of people going around, even New Jersey, stealing stuff, breaking into houses because they're pissed off that Trump got elected. Believe it or not. Anyway, so um, just want to put this out that who the hell knows? Nobody, gives, you know, if you got your mind made up, you got your mind made up. But whatever. Bill Clinton, for the 42nd president of the United States, you know, husband of Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton actually controlled him through the Rose Law Firm. She was more the brains behind the money, and not that that was the only place the money was coming from. There was a lot of other things. Now, you, everybody probably knows, most people know, about Mena, Arkansas, and the drugs coming into Mena, uh, arms going down to the Contras, and uh, money coming in, uh, drug trades, and money coming in to fund black ops for the CIA because the CIA couldn't get the funds from Congress, so they find, they turned to drug running. You know, like James Comey was involved with HSBC, Hong Kong, Shanghai Bank, and he was the director of that bank was involved in you know, drug running. Now, Bill, it's not like Democrat did it or Republican did it. They both did it, okay? Now, and I say a little bit about Trump later on, but, you know, I don't know 110% about what Trump's going to do, but he's the only guy that's saying something different. That's why he pissed off the elite on both sides, whether it was the Democrats or the Republicans. But, uh, and I don't want to pick on Bill too much here because I'm going to get on with Ronnie Reagan and George Bush, Herbert Walker Bush and all that, Nixon, and the rest of them, you know. So, Cousin Bill, I call him Cousin Bill for a reason. <laughs> I don't know if he is. He might be a distant one. I'm not sure. Uh, some of these theories are right from Lord Greg Hallett, but who the hell knows. So he was the 40th and 42nd governor of Arkansas. He actually got elected five times, I think it was. Um, there was two-year terms. And um, he got elected the first time, then he lost the election, and he got three more, then he didn't finish the last term, he went for the presidency. So he was governor during the time... Ronnie Reagan was in, right? So Ronnie Reagan was in from 1980 to 1988. Now, anybody with half a brain knows who really controlled Ronnie Reagan. H.W. Bush, George H.W. Bush, former head of the CIA. Actually, so you got Clinton as governor at that time. Ronnie Reagan is running the Iran-Contra deal, you know, arms to the Contras. And uh, money coming back in, for dr and drug money coming back in. Drugs being sold to the inner cities. And guess who gets that? The minorities mainly, right? All right, that's the game plan. But I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Because you got the war on drugs that was already set up by Nixon. And then uh, further procedures were done. Uh, got stricter with Ronnie Reagan. Now this is Man Up Airport in Arkansas. And... You know, there's witnesses that were killed, that saw stuff going on, like the boys at the tracks. They said it was a suicide. They fell asleep on the tracks. And a mother um, went ahead and insisted they have a better autopsy. They found out, hey, the boys' skulls were crushed in, and they were dead before they were laying on the tracks because they saw stuff. People that saw stuff with the drug running, they disappeared or they died or whatever. That's, you know, it's well, it's actually pretty well known. I've I've known this since 1992. You know, the internet is actually bringing out a lot of these stories now. And I used to get a papers, and they were from the Associated Press, but it was people that researched the articles in the Associated Press, and a lot of them didn't make it into the major papers, but they were still, you know, bona fide stories, and they would analyze them. And, and I, I knew about all this stuff. I knew about, you know, the, the Arkansas development, uh, Arkansas, Arkansas Finance Development Authority, which, you know, it was a bond which went, and I don't even want to get in with the Clinton scandals because there's plenty on the Bushes and everybody else. I guess Clintons are more dirty, but they're all involved, and actually H. W. George H.W. Bush was the kingpin during that time, all through the 80s at least. Um, when Ronnie Reagan was president, Vice President George W. Bush was running the show. So for eight years, and then he became president for four years. Bill Clinton became president for the next eight years after that, in 1992 to 2000, right? 
And what happened then? I mean, uh, you know, he was basically already working for the George Bush for all the way since the early 80s. You know, before, um, I think he became Attorney General in the late 70s. But there's a reason they put these people in. Actually, he's, Bill Clinton's supposed to be, according to Lord Greg Hallett, and you won't find this, and I don't know if this guy's correct or not, he's supposed to be the son of Churchill, Winston Churchill, some kind of uh, love affair with somebody. And Believe it or not, maybe, maybe not. I know Churchill's the uh, son, actual son of Edward, Edward VII. I, but it may be true because, you know, why would this guy be chosen to be president? You know, he's not, he, that just didn't happen haphazardly, you know. He's in the club. Um, yeah, you got H.W., Barack Obama, George Bush, Bill Clinton, Jimmy Carter. Barack Obama, obviously he's gay. I mean, you know that. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Now, I shouldn't say this on here because, man, this is probably going to get me in. Well, maybe not. I'll just tell you where I, heard, I where partly I heard it from, but it's not the only thing. Uh, Major Brown's wife, who had Major Brown's diary, he was involved in a lot of secret operations, and he knew a lot about the sexual escapades of, you know, top people. He knew he says that George H. W. Bush liked young black males in their teens for sex. Kind of makes me wonder about what the relationship between Obama and George Bush was. Who the hell knows? I don't know. But it makes me wonder, okay? But we do know, do know Obama's gay. You know, there's no doubt about that. And I'll get on with that because, you know, this is the White House, right? He lit it up like that when they passed the, you know, the gay marriage thing. The Supreme Court, which, you know, whether you say yay or nay, there's no legal precedent for the gay marriage in this country, but whatever. But, you know, he lit it up like that. So he's like, he, he's, he's gay. You know, there's no doubt about him. He's freaking... Uh, but here I want to put this chart out because, uh, you know, all these people are like thinking, you know, the Clintons are for the minorities and shit. I don't know. As a matter of fact, when Bill Clinton was uh, president, he um, he kicked out more freaking uh, illegals in, you know, in this country than you could believe. He got them all out of there. Actually, there's a lot of stuff that went on in Arkansas. He kept the blacks out of government big time. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that they got caught saying on hot, hot mics and stuff. Bill and Bill and Hillary, they can't stand black people. It's like they need to vote. I don't know why why people even freaking get buying into their bullshit anymore. But here you got the federal popul- prison population, 1914 to 1920. Uh, you notice, like during Prohibition, it goes way the hell up. That was a stupid thing, right? Alcohol prohibition, 1920 to 1933, and then it really very slowly levels off. But once they got all the bullshit rules, more bullshit rules because of prohibition. You know, the country was a hell of a lot better in 1913, 1914, before World War One. So here you got 1971, President Nixon declares a war on drugs, which the, roar, the drugs are being brought in by, you know, CIA. You know, if they can't stop drugs, they can't stop nukes coming in, a dirty bomb or a uh, uh, what do you call that? Not a dirty bomb, but uh, it's a little, little bit stronger than that. It's not weapons-grade material. But you can get something like that in the country or poison uh, water supply in the reservoirs. They can't stop that either. You know, it's quite obvious they could stop the war. They could stop drugs any time they want. But it's financing the, uh, you know, the underground government, if you want to call it. So... Uh, but guess who's getting mainly hammered by the, by this? Usually minorities, usually blacks. More blacks than anybody, probably. Probably more blacks. Um, then, here you got the 1984 Sentencing Reform Act, the SRA. That was Ronnie Reagan. Now, when does Bill Clinton come in? He comes in in 1992, right? You can see here's this line right here. That's 1990. What happens in 1992? He gets three strikes and you're out. So, like three minor freaking offenses and you're out, right? Well, it's, you can you can get over on that if you got the money for the attorneys, you know, $350 an hour plus. And of course, you know, a lot of black people don't have 350 bucks an hour to spend on an attorney because if you spend, I don't know, 
50 hours, it's $175,000. You got money for that? I don't know, or whatever, you know, whatever it takes. And actually, when you go to trial, the rates start going up even more, right? So, what are you going to do? That's why the prison population went way to hell up. So Obama let a few black people out, make it look like a big show. Um, I don't know what Trump's going to do, man. If I, me, if it was m bullshit minor drug offenses, I'd just get him the hell out of there, man. That's what I'd be doing. But then, I don't know, because you'd have to make sure people aren't, they're okay with being back in society, because if you got thrown in jail for bullshit minor drug offense, I'd be pissed off at society at whole, you know what I mean? If it was me, I'd just think, trying to put myself in their shoes. Uh, but, you know, if you look at the world today for prison population, the dark red country, which is us, USA, we got more people per capita in prison than any other country in the world. Number two is Russia, and then you got, like, Mongolia. So, like, the darkest red is has the most prisoners per per population, per capita population, right? So USA, and you know what's what's going on here? This is under, actually the Clinton administration made it worse, man. And he's the guy that's acting like he's all for the freaking minorities. He's full of crap. That's what I'm telling you. The wife is a pile of shit, too. If you don't want to believe me, fine. I don't give a damn, you know. I, I mean, I really don't care. I really don't give a shit. If you, if you can't see the logic of it, it's fine. I mean, they're both doing it, the Republicans and the Democrats. So who the hell is Trump pissing off all those big guys on the top? That's why he's probably going to be for the better. I mean, a lot of people just, you know, they just buying into all the freaking bullshit propaganda out there. I don't, You know, nobody knows for sure. He didn't even get in office yet, for crying out loud. But I know the liberal media is going to tear him up every time they can. And I'm not a conservative media. Because there's a lot of shit I don't agree with the conservatives. Uh, there's only couple things pro-life and pro-self-defense that's about it you know but if you look at this chart if you go into the you know it goes from red to lighter red to orange to yellow that means less and less people in jail per 100,000 people of population down it goes to light blue then it goes to medium blue and then dark blue so the dark blue is where you have the least amount of people per population in prison it's like India and Central Africa and West Africa, right? That's where you got the least amount of people in prison per 100,000 population. And of course, Northern Europe is, looks pretty good, which you got, you know, medium blue, Scandinavian countries and stuff. Actually, all of Europe looks pretty good, not too bad. Um, China looks pretty good. I mean, they got the worst prisons, but Canada looks pretty good. Anywhere where it's Yellow is like in the middle, and then when it gets in orange, dark orange, and we got the worst. So who the hell brought this up? What, who brought this about? You could say the Republicans. You could say the Democrats. It's both of them, right? Actually, actually during the Clinton administration, man, he really cranked it up because if you're looking at this graph, this was Nixon. Uh, then he gets impeached, right? So 1980, Reagan's in office. Nixon's out. He does the war on drugs, and Nancy was saying, "Just say no to drugs." You know, it was that's a smart thing, right? And the the prison population was starting to rise. And then Reagan gets in office. You're thinking, "Wow, it's rising really fast." So that's just one term. Here's a second term. Like, wow, it's going off the chart. Then you got H.W. in there, goes on, and it's like, whoa, it's accelerating even more. And Clinton gets in office, 1992 to 2000. It's, it went like this, you know, then George H., then George Bush, then Obama. Here's the end of it, it's Obama. <laughs> These guys are, I, I don't give a shit who the hell it is, they're all screwed up, man. This is ridiculous. And a lot of it's over bullshit. But yeah, who the hell's funding, uh, who's funding all the black ops that are like, you know, secret operations that are against the American people? It's the drug running coming from the U.S. government, which gets the drugs get fed into the inner cities to the minorities. And they're the number ones, get, the number one people getting busted with the drugs. 
And even if it's minor of drug offenses, three strikes and you're out, that was instituted by Bill Clinton. And he also, and you see, a lot of, I don't know why, you know, he had overwhelming support in the black community, right, Bill Clinton? Amazing. He had overwhelming support even in the uh, Hispanic community. He was the one deporting all the, uh, you know, the illegals and getting rid of them left and right. Then comes Barack Obama. But you know what the deal is? Same deal. He's darker. That's the difference. That's the only difference. And actually, you know, if you look at his heritage, it's, well, it's not black American, really. It's black uh, Muslim and Arabian, black, you know, from uh, Kenya, whatever. But he's not Kenyan Kenyan, like, you know, the, the Negro, black, African, right? Like, a lot of the heritage of America. Actually, he doesn't have black. He's half white, too. That's another thing. But he's got... Muslim. His his lineage, his family lineage goes back to Muslim slave traders and slave owners. You know? A lot of people don't realize Louis Farrakhan, he's uh I mean it's amazing. I don't even get this shit, man. It's like I don't know, you know, me being a thinking man, and I try to, you know, just think like if I was in somebody else's shoes. Say I was black and I'd be thinking, Why the hell would I want to be Muslim? When I know those are the guys that sold my ancestors over here, right? I'd be like, that's the way I'd be thinking. That's I don't know, I don't get it, but that's what Obama was. But that's why he's all in the club. They're all bullshit. So what's Trump doing? He's pissing all of them off, which to me is a big flag saying that, you know, if they're against him and they're all against him, he might be he might be doing something right. <laughs> So, and uh, they're trying to upset everybody, man. They're trying to, you know, George Soros is funding the Purple Revolution and shit. And, you know, Ronnie Reagan, he wasn't, you know, what I look at, I look at Trump not like a Ronnie Reagan. I look at him more like a JFK. And uh, he's going to say, he says he's not going to accept any salary except for $1 to make it legal. He's going to forego the $400,000 a year salary. But, you know, there's only two presidents that did that. One was Herbert Hoover, and we went into the Great Depression in 1929 with that president, and the other president foregoes the salary was John F. Kennedy, God John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who got assassinated in November 1963. To me, that's a bad omen. But I think the people need to get behind this Trump guy and quit buying into the bullshit about what the major media is feeding you because... The major media never really goes over all this crap that I just told you right now. There's a lot more to it. But fortunately, you can look on YouTube. You can find a lot more. And I don't want to make this video too long. There's a lot of scandals that, uh, you know, in the Republican Party. And there's a lot. But, you know, everything that was even going on in during Bill Clinton's time with Hillary Clinton in Arkansas. And she was the co-conspirator with that coke co-criminal, you know, no matter what it was. I mean, whether it was a whitewater um, land development, which was, uh, the infrastructure was, uh, a lot of the infrastructure, like the docks and the waterway was built with uh, taxpayer money. Then if somebody put, like, you know, three years worth of payments into the house, whatever they bought over there, um, if they missed one payment, they lost all their equity. They didn't get a dime. They just got thrown out. That was, that was you know, that was the whitewater scandal. That's, that's screwed up. you got to read the fine print. But, you know, H.W., George H.W. Bush was controlling Reagan, controlling um, Bill Clinton, too. And sort of controlling George Bush, because actually H.W. was telling him not to do stuff, and he was doing stuff anyway. That's why George Bush turned out to be a lousy president. Actually, H.W., for a guy that's a New World Order guy, at least he's got his shit together. i tell you that right now, but he's evil. <laughs> he's, he's freaking evil. And uh, he's the guy, I think he was the guy that stole Geronimo's skull. No, it was Prescott Bush, his daddy. Yeah, that's why a lot of people don't like the Bushes, though. Uh, Prescott Bush was involved with trading with the enemy. Uh, that's H.W., George H.W. Bush's father. Prescott Bush was, uh, I don't know, a senator from like the 50s to the 60s. Um, but back in, I think it was 1942, he got busted for trading with the enemy. In other words, the Nazis. He's running like a Nazi bank or something in the United States. 
there's a lot of shit going on, man. History, you're getting out of the books, it's a pile of bullshit. It's not that it's just history deck, you know, names, dates, and places and shit. It's all how they conspire to rip off the American public. And honestly, I didn't trust this guy from, from, at the beginning, Trump. I was like thinking, maybe he's okay, maybe he's not. Because he always praised the hell out of Bill Clinton. And I'm thinking, maybe he's just another... Because, you know, these guys aren't opposites. You know, H.W., Ronnie Reagan was a little bit different, but he was still, you know, his speeches didn't match his actions. I think Jimmy Carter was, is probably, you know, he's, well, you're probably not going to like me saying that, but, you know, Jimmy Carter was probably, is probably the most honest of this bunch right here, Jimmy Carter. So he's a Democrat, right? So, I mean, you know, John F. Kennedy was the best president we had in probably, I don't know, since 1932, okay? Um, probably the other better good ones we got are the ones the history books say there's did nothing like uh, Warren Harding and Calvin Coolidge. Warren Harding and Calvin Coolidge was the age of prosperity in the 1920s got rid of a lot of regulations and I'll just put this as a side note um, probably the most racist president we had was a Democrat Woodrow Wilson uh, back in 1912 to 1920 and I know the last couple of years he was in office he was uh, pretty much incapacitated but but almost all the time he was in office he was still controlled by this Edward Mandel House who was his like advisor um, he was really a puppet of the elite but he was our most racist president, Woodrow Wilson. I, th I would say he probably, because he actually um, had segregation instituted in the federal government. And that contributed to some of the biggest race riots we had in this country in, uh, you know, the 19-teens. And then that, that policy was stopped upon the, um, the election of uh, Warren Hardin, the Republican president. You know, he fixed, you know, he got rid of the segregation in the uh, federal government. Republican guy. No, I don't know. I mean, you know, these freaking Democrats are saying they're not racist. I'm like, they're racist. They're full of shit. You know, they're full of it. Well, they all are, I think, actually. But, uh, you know, people got to calm down a little bit. Because I think this Trump's guy is really, he, he's uh, he's liberal in a true, a good sense. You know, I know that you throw that word around today, like liberal, it means, uh, like you say, a liberal, uh, liberal is, you know, liberal is not, they took the, you know, the English word doesn't mean that. Like, if you look at liberal, what does that mean? Freedom, you know, easy going, do your own thing, I don't care what you do, fine. But, you know, it, they took the word, and, you know, politically, it means like a social engineer that's like a dictator, and you gotta, I gotta have it my way, you know, that kind of crap. But I don't like, because I, I consider myself pretty damn liberal in a true sense, not in a way that, you know, the New York Times is liberal or something like that. I would probably, you know, and I would be doing, to tell you the truth, uh, you know, as a side note, I mentioned this before in other videos, uh, with the federal prison population, first off, I would give everybody freaking vitamins, man, the best ones, um, like uh, nicotinic acid and... Uh, vitamin B3, the natural kind, of vitamin C, and uh, healing waves, and uh, meditation music, because, um, you know, you're talking about correction, rehabilitation, you want to first uh, make everybody feel right in the head, you know what I mean, that's part of it, and nutrition does some of that, does, contributes to that, and anybody who was in there over bullshit minor defenses, like, you know, three strikes and you're out for freaking drugs, i get them the hell out of there. I would. It wouldn't be like a dozen or two released. There'd be hundreds of thousands released. But you can't do that all at once. I know that. You definitely couldn't do that because, you know, you got to do a couple here and a couple there, parole or whatever the hell you got to do. You got to get them out of here. Because, like, what we got in here in the United States, I mean, how come, you know, it looks like the middle of Africa is more enlightened than the United States as far as, like, prisons in India and also, um, well, it looks like France, Germany, uh, Sweden, Norway, and uh, 
whatever something else is up there, Finland. And, you know, not much on the prison population, in Ireland, in Iceland, right? Not much on the prison population, right? So why the hell are we like this? What's, what's our problem? We never were like that. I mean, I think the United States needs to go back to, like, you know, you know, 1913 levels of pre prison population, which is very small, you know? And anybody's in there, they need to get rehabilitated. Like, for real. I, I don't like that shit. I think, actually, actually, I think the freaking jackasses that run the prisons that belong in there, they're screwed up. They get off on the power trip they got. This guy, too, bomb he don't give a shit. He's more worried about the gay rights things, man. I don't know what the hell these guys doing. He's gay, whatever. Yeah, it's so weird. He lit up the White House like this. This is weird. Purple, orange, and green, and yellow. That's nice, Obama. You good job. You really. You make me proud that you're my president, right? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Shit. Anyway, so, I mean, I don't know what people are freaking out about Trump, man. Any more brainwashing out there by the major media? Are you going to get all bent out of shape some more? So, people need to use a little bit of brains because there's a reason the major media... Anything the major media says, it's bullshit. It's really what... If you really want to just... You know, if they tell you something, if they're harping on something one way and all that kind of crap, you know the opposite is true. I mean, if you don't even want to think about what the hell's going on, whatever the major media pushes a lot, you know, it's bullshit. It's really what it is. And, uh, you know, as much as I like Cousin Bill over here, and he wasn't he wasn't out for the helping to play. Yeah, he's got a, what has he got, Danny Williams, his illegitimate son from years ago. I put a video out on that back in 2013. People thought I was putting it out just because of politics. I said, no, I put it out. Uh, you know, first half of 2013. He's got a. I knew about it for 20 something years already. I already known. Him. He's got a black son, Danny Williams. And uh, if Danny Williams does a DNA test, he might be distantly related to me through Edward. If this crackpot, I don't want to call him a crackpot because I don't know where the hell he's coming up with this. Churchill is the real father of. Uh, Clinton, but I know Churchill's the son of Edward, but my great-grandfather is supposed to be the illegitimate son of uh, Duke Albert Edward when he was young, when he was like a young Duke in his 20s. And uh, if Danny Williams does a DNA, he's going to be related to me, and I ain't going to say who I am, but if he does one out there, I'm going to look for his name. And if I see him pop up as my fourth cousin, that's going to prove the whole nine yards, because then it's going to mean Danny Williams is not only this son of Bill Clinton, but he's also the grandson of Churchill and the great-grandson of Edward VII. I'll give you some serious name recognition. How's 